Hey guys, it is Danny and welcome to this evening update. I hope you're doing fantastic and we're looking at the latest coming from NHC. So there has been a couple of changes since this morning, particularly with the disturbance which is uh, off the southeastern US coast. We can see that it is marked with that 16. Now why is that so? Well, it is now designated a potential tropical cyclone. So regardless of it developing or not, it will be bringing those tropical storm impacts to portions of the east coast of the US. That is why it is designated a potential tropical cyclone. So those impacts are imminent as we're going to be heading into tomorrow and into uh, the, the weekend. So there's likely to be some dangerous conditions in terms of the heavy rainfall and uh, even those gusty winds as well, which we'll go on to in a moment here. But we've also got our disturbance not yet designated as an invest, but when it does, it will become invest 90L. And that invest is simply short for investigation, an area of investigation. Uh, being closely watched for development. So there is no uh, model guidance available as yet because that designation has not been given to the system. However, the formation chance is up for it and there is still Nigel out there, still a Cat 1 hurricane making its way out. It will gradually dissipate out there. So not a bother for anyone right now. Let's go on to the satellite imagery and this afternoon there we can see the disturbance. It is looking much better compared to this morning and it is trying to acquire those subtropical, possibly tropical characteristics. But regardless, it is likely to bring those impacts. As I said, there's Nigel up there and uh, we've got our disturbance to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. So there you can see all that activity in association with it. A bit of dry air ahead and it's not likely to rapidly develop into something, but we'll gradually see it get better organized. And there is still some question marks out there as it relates to whether this will be a problem for the Caribbean or not. And uh, as we look in the region, by the way, we can see that there's quite a bit of activity. So let's go on to some areas We'll look at South, uh, Northern South America, after which we'll drift up north. So here we have it, and we can see these showers and thunderstorms developing across uh, some areas, parts of Colombia, Venezuela, especially over in the eastern side of the country. Also over into the Guyanas, we see some activity. So this could be a bit more widespread by the time this video is posted. So let me know what's happening for you. As I said this morning, the ABC Islands are in the clear. There's no signs of any significant rainfall for you guys. So Aruba, Curacao, Bonaire, unfortunately there is nothing much happening. I know it has been very hot for some time now, well, a very long time now, no substantial rainfall there. Let's drift further up north. We've got that blob in the Southwest Caribbean just offshore of parts of Southern Central America. America and even some activity developing further inland as well and across parts of the Caribbean sections of Cuba, Jamaica, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico and over in the Lesser Antilles we see some thunderstorms popping up this afternoon so that daytime heating is contributing to the activity that we see and I have been seeing the comments from you guys in the Lesser Antilles in the various islands Trinidad, St. Lucia, Grenada so there has been some well-needed rainfall just as uh, was forecast so in a previous update I believe on Tuesday I actually spoke about that that was even highlighted on my thumbnail and that is exactly what we see happening so some rainfall relief in those areas also across some spots in the Bahamas, but nothing too crazy right now. Let's drift further up north and there we can see our disturbance. It is getting better organized and uh, it is given a 60% chance to develop through both 48 hours and 5 days. So the formation chance isn't super high. And uh, the only reason that there are advisories being initiated, as I said, is because of its imminent impact. So even though in and of itself it has not reached the threshold to be named or to be considered a subtropical or tropical cyclone, it is going to be bringing the those impacts and as it is going to be making its way up north as we head into tomorrow going into this weekend it will be bringing those conditions which can be very dangerous and so let's go on to the cone forecast and here we can see this highlighted blue area indicative of that tropical storm warning which is in effect for sections of the eastern u.s so north carolina virginia going to maryland delaware those areas are going to be feeling impacts even parts of pennsylvania and heading into new jersey could feel impacts from the system as well so that tropical storm warning means that these tropical storm conditions are likely within 36 hours or less. So the system is going to be bearing down with those impacts and the main concern is going to be the water as it relates to the heavy rainfall. So that can trigger flooding in some areas and uh, there could also be coastal flooding due to that storm surge. So the winds of the system pushing the water on shore and speaking of it could make landfall with winds up to 60 miles per hour. That is what the National Hurricane Center is expecting as of right now. But uh, the gusts are likely 
likely to be stronger than that but sustained winds could be around 60 miles per hour so uh, those winds could be an issue for weak structures some of those trees out there so guys please be uh, careful and take the necessary precautions and please listen to your local officials as well and now we're heading into the main development region where we've got our disturbance out there given that high chance to develop. So the formation chance has finally changed. It has increased for the system, so it has been stagnant at 70% for some time. But now through the next seven days, we can see that it has risen up to 80%. So uh, it is very likely that this will become a tropical storm within the coming days. The depression potentially as soon as this weekend, a named storm not long after. And then in the long term, this could become a hurricane. So through the next two days, the formation chance is also up. It was at 20% this morning. Now, this afternoon, we can see that it has risen up to 40%. So that has doubled and the system is getting better organized. So that is why we see this increase in the formation chance of it. So there is still that chance that it could bring some impacts to portions of the Caribbean, especially the Northeastern Islands, but there is still some uncertainty down the road. But what I've noticed is a recent trend where the system potentially missing the Caribbean as what we've seen others do, such as Lee and even Niger gel recently so uh, will this be another fish storm let's wait and see but as we go on to some model data let's head on to what the gfs and the euro ensembles have to show and we're kickstarting with gfs and so all of these tracks here are not for the disturbance but uh, some of them are for another tropical wave that could follow behind and try to develop as well but overall we can see that most of these tracks expect that whatever forms will remain offshore we see a number of them taking the system closer to the caribbean a couple of them even saying that hey we'll enter the caribbean before curving out that was a trend especially yesterday but now today we're seeing them shifting back out to sea due to a weakening expected in that high pressure system out there because if you look at those pastels where we see that orange is shading right there uh, that is representing that area of high pressure notice how much it is displaced toward the east so that would allow an opportunity for the disturbance to curve up before move uh, before making its way into the caribbean which would be a good miss let's head on to what the euro ensemble tracks have to show and we see something similar even more agreement on something potentially curving out but i want to take you guys to this set of members here showing another tropical wave so we see that we've got these models now hopping onto another wave developing after the passage of the current one so we'll have to wait and see what will happen with that there are no new areas out there to watch as of right now but heading into the uh heading into the next week by the way these ensemble maps go out to next saturday so uh over a week from now and we might have something else to watch the following week who knows so we definitely have to keep our eyes out there the season is not over yet we also want to watch the caribbean for some increase in moisture especially over in the western caribbean and some models such as gfs was hinting that hey we could see something try to get itself together out there but since it hasn't been showing much and only time will tell as per usual but i'm here to keep you guys posted as always and that is pretty much what i wanted to share with you in this update and i hope you found it to be quite informative but as usual if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments i'll respond to you once i get the chance to do so and as always remember to be with wise